Hello. So, new videos. Woohoo. Um, super excited because I'm going to be talking and playing a lot more with fiber and spinning and just showing you trying new things because I really love trying new things, especially when I just feel really excited about trying a new technique because I just enjoy playing. So today I'm supposed to be on a field trip with my youngest class, their end of year picnic, but of course, like every other field trip he's had in the last couple of weeks, um, we got rained out. So it's postponed. So I was like, well, I could probably do some work or tidy my house. Or I could take this time since I wasn't thinking I was going to be working right now anyways to play. So I choose play. So, okay, so what I have here is this little like bump of fiber from Hilltop Cloud. It's like blowing out super bad, but it's um, 76, why can't I say 70%? It's 70% super fine merino, 30% tested silk. Um, maybe the name is photography. Not really sure. Obviously, it's like a black and white. I think it's a roving. Um, and I think, I don't, I'm assuming she always has them like this because I have checked back and there were still the same price. But it was like buy two, get one half. So I bought three in this color because I thought, oh, it's like a nice neutral for applying with something. And I bought three in like this really nice, um, kind of like a marine navy blue. And um, yeah, so. Then I had this idea because I've been watching all of Mina Phillips um, knitting expats videos on her blending board and I really want to make a blending board but I'm like well, just not quite there yet um, soon but a while ago I bought these mini hand cards and I have not worked up the courage to play with them yet um, only because like I have a hard time I like I like to play and I like to try new things but it also takes a while to get over that initial like it doesn't work as easily as I think it will moment. I don't know. Most of the time I can push through, <laughs> but I just know there's going to be like a learning curve because I've never done anything like this before. However, it occurred to me today that I bet you I could use this like a teeny blending board so I could like load it up with fiber and then use some random knitting needles that I have. These are from Knit Affair, which I think is in Germany. And I order, I don't know, I ordered these like ages and ages and ages ago. Um, they're just little six millimeter knitting needles. I have some various size dowels somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Um, anyway, so I figured I could load this up with fiber. And so load this up with this, but also with scraps, because I've been saving little bitty pieces of fiber from all the projects I've been spinning um, and plug them together and make some like crazy little teeny row legs or fiber beans or teeny bumps or whatever you want to call them. Um, and I thought that would be really fun. That would be such a fun experiment. Um, and then that would help me know if getting a full size blending board would actually be something I would use or if I could just do everything I want with these because um, these do come as a pair so I can still use them for actual hand carding. Um, but if I can do little row leggy type things with this, then I might not even need to get a full on blending board. See my thought process there? Anyways, so I'm gonna experiment with this. I'm gonna try to videotape what I'm actually doing. If it doesn't work, I will just come back with a video of some of whatever comes off of this. For better or for worse, you will get to see what it looks like. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm sitting in the bottom of my stairs. I feel like I need to hunch down because you probably can't see all of my head. Um, we're going to see if we can at least get a little bit of video of me actually playing. And then if it doesn't work out, I may not share it. But we'll see. So I've gathered all my supplies here on my bottom step. Um, taking my little carter or my little, yeah, hand carter. Put it, placing it between my knees because I figured then it'll kind of hold. And I'm going to... If anyone's ever like watched a hand cutting video or probably have a hand cutter of your own, actually I think I'm gonna start with it across my lap. Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say it might look awkward because I'm kind of loading it up instead of down as opposed to like if it was an actual um, blending board and facing me, but whatever. The point is the fiber gets in the place and that's all that really matters, right? Um, 
so I think I was thinking about I was just watching the shacked um, video on how to use your hand carters and so I started loading it similar to what she was talking about and I can't remember who does the video I should put that on the screen if I think about it um, but I guess I don't need to do that because um, I'm not using it to hand card I'm using it like a blending board so I can load it right up to the top so this is like a little chunk of a roll leg from uh, spindles and stitches I want to say it's the Lazy Sunday colorway, and it was funny because I was spinning these sample roll legs that she sends, which I think is freaking awesome, um, and spinning them for my, I have this project that's kind of like a travel spinning project, so I just like leftovers from a spinning project or these little samples, I um, add them all in to this ongoing sort of never-ending cowl type thing. And, uh, yeah, I was spinning this roll leg for that. And then after I got up from wherever I was sitting, I just found this, like, chunk of roll leg that I had left behind that I didn't even know. So it worked perfectly for this. So you can see the black and white fibers sort of, like, made a base and then the funky colored fiber on the top. And now I'm going to try to pull it through into a roll leg. So I, thankfully, have practiced at least this stick Part, um, before and you can see on my Instagram I think I saved the video in my highlights of me turning a die candy bat into some rollings just to make it a little easier to spin so my vision actually a good kind of segue um, my vision is to spin up some of these that will have kind of a oh, I can't pinch it hard enough to keep it um, to spin up these funky roll legs and ply them together with that big boy bat from dye candy because I think it'll be kind of a nice complement something that's like equally not crazy but equally um, high in visual interest but also kind of the black and white will make it kind of grounded so I think I'm gonna have to pull it off here oh my god God, look at that! I love it. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Oh, it's got super tight at the end there. <laughs> and I have to use these knitting needles backwards. Okay, so lesson learned. Maybe don't pull it so tight at the end. <laughs> now I can't figure out how to take these off without making a huge mess. How long do you want to watch me fight with this for? <laughs> Go on for a while. Okay. Ta-da! Oh my god, this is so fun. Okay, maybe I'll do the opposite. Maybe that'll make it easier to pull out after. Okay, so I'll set up for another one because there's still quite a bit of fiber on here. Maybe I overloaded it. I don't really care. Um, if I get a few that have the same colors in them, then I will just mix them up before I spin so that I don't necessarily get like a striping effect to this ply. Um, although I feel like the big boy bat had a bit of a stripe to it. I think it's kind of nice. This is turning out kind of weird. Um, I think it's kind of nice when one ply has obvious color progressions and the other ply is a little bit more um, or a little bit more um, harmonious or homogenized or what, how, whatever word you want to use. So, you know, if one ply has a lot of like color shifting or a lot of variegation or a lot of speckles or whatever, then I like a plain ply to kind of support it. Because um, I feel like that just makes it then the two aren't fighting with each other. Like, not always. Sometimes it depends on the colors and stuff like that. Like, you know, if we're talking about sort of a... <laughs> sort of like that, kind of weird. Um, if we're talking about, like, a fractal plot, a fractal spin or something, both can have color shifts, but one has such long color shifts and the other one has quicker color shifts. So, again, it kind of... They support each other as opposed to fighting with each other. By the way, this 
opposite knitting needle situation worked way easier, even though I know that one got similarly tight because it was rolling off kind of at different rates. So I'm just pulling out my fiber a little bit because now I still have fiber left on. That one sort of pulled off some, but not as much as I was hoping. So I'm going to figure out how to load this in a better way. But so far, plan is working. Because yeah, that second row leg, I got a lot of fiber pulling off from the ends, but not as much in the middle. So I think I have to use my fingers to kind of support a little bit more if the fiber's not consistently loaded. But again, considering this is the first time I've done this, so now I'm kind of rolling down the card instead of trying to pull it out from the end because I think that was the problem with the last one too is that I was fighting to pull stuff down to the end that I think also with this particular fiber, because it had been in a roll leg, there were still some parts that were quite coiled and I think they were getting trapped on the... So look at that. Oh, so fun. Okay, I'm going to come back at the end because I don't think you need to keep sitting here watching me, um, assuming you even get to watch me, um, but I'll come back at the end and show you what happened. Oh my goodness. I don't know how well, I feel like this is really blowing out, so I may have to just take a picture and insert it, but um, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so excited. You can see my dreads leaving a shadow. <laughs> so, yeah. I just love how, I feel like the camera's really picking up the color, but in real life, the color for the majority are really subtle. Um, and what you really see is just the black and white or the grayish. Um, once that was all blended together, you really see the gray on the outside and just a hint of the color in the middle. Um, and some of them, I know just because I obviously loaded them together, that the color that's reflected in the outside, like one of them is kind of green. I think it's this one here. Um, it's kind of green on the outside, but you can see this pink shining through. So what you can see on the outside isn't even really a good reflection of what all is in there. Um, and some of them I kind of experimented with like loading it up more, loading it up less. Um, the ends are a little messy, so I got to figure out how to fix that. But in reality, like for me to spin them, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to weigh these and I think I'm going to spin some of them just to see what will happen when I actually put them to work. And then I will tell you all about that later. So this is day two of Adventures in the Very Mini Blending Board. Excuse the crinkle because I realized I left the little roll leg in a bag. So these are some of the mini roll legs that I made. I'm holding skills. I need to work on like how do you hold a roll leg so it's some of them are a little denser, kind of stand up on their own. Some of them are a little floppy. It's a little suggestive looking. Um but they're all really cute and I'm really excited about them. And some of them, it's cool because some of them, like this one has like the barely hint of pink on the outside. But if you look at the end, you can really see the pink that's in there. And I didn't go crazy putting the fiber in because I didn't want it to be like super saturated with color. I wanted it to be gray with little hints. And then I spun this little roll leg and I used my very classy spindle by a Classy Squid, Classy Squid Fiber Company. I don't know. Sorry if that's wrong. <laughs> classy Squid on uh, Instagram. I feel like if you search that, she should come up. Um, I love it. This is the first time actually I've used the carbon fiber shaft. Um, and I love it. I love it more than I love the wood, and I didn't think that would happen. Um, maybe I'll talk about this more in a separate video. But I used that, uh, and it spun really fine, which wasn't exactly what I was sort of hoping for, but I love it. It's beautiful. So you can see how it's gray. Those weird parts at the ends. Um, it's gray with little bits of color, which is like perfection. Um, and you can see there's parts where, like, there were little, like, neppy type things and where, you know, the fiber was kind of thick and didn't want to draft out because some of the fiber 
the gray stuff or the black and white stuff that I was using from Hilltop Clouds, so this is it with the band off, it's kind of like all rolled up. Um, it, and you can see how it really blended into a more consistent gray compared to this like really tuxedo-y black and white. Um, the gray uh, drafted super smooth, but the other fibers, because they're such a mishmash and because some of them were like chunks and some of them were a bit felted, which is like, you know, if I'm um, spinning like a braid that's really smooth and there's like a weird felted bit or a chunk or something, I'll just stick it in the container because I'm like, I'm not going to fight with it and try to pick it all apart. Like sometimes I just want to go. Um, so yeah, so like when I was trying to draft, like it wasn't drafting super consistently, but it's like fairly consistent overall, except for the colored bits. And I love that. So I spun it and then two plied it back on itself. So that's how you get like a little barber pull through the color sections. And I'm so pleased. So I think I'm going to do up, I'm going to keep going, I think, until I run out of fiber in here. You can see there's like a big pink chunk that came in some mishmash container. Um, I'm going to keep going, I think, with the gray until this is empty or close to it. Um, yeah, but then <laughs> in the mail yesterday, sorry, more crinkling. In the mail yesterday, I got this, which is from a D stash. Um, so if you don't follow her, the Spindle Witch on Instagram, she is amazing. Um, she's Canadian and she was de-stashing this bag of recycled sari silk fiber. Um, it's just like a super multicolor crazy, it says 50 gram bag. Um, yeah, so you can see it actually comes out as a roving. I was sort of expecting it to just be like that's in the bag, um, but it actually comes out like a roving, which is fine because I can just tear off chunks like this. So I started yesterday after I checked the mail, so like late afternoon. And in that amount of time, um, I blended this, well, not this, obviously, because this is clearly unblended. Um, but this was that navy marine color I was talking about. It's called Bay. Uh, again, it's 70% super fine merino, 30% tested silk from Hilltop Cloud. And I love these bands. I think that's super fun. Um, they're like concert wristbands or like my kids get them when they go swimming. Anyway, so I blended 50 grams, yeah, 50 gram bump like this with sorry silk in unmeasured amounts into this. And I just finished this like a few minutes ago. Into all these teeny roll eggs. So I kind of experimented back and forth because they didn't want a lot of the sorry silk to be on the outside. I kind of wanted it to make sure it got sandwiched in the middle of the roll legs. So I kind of experimented with how to lay the fiber out. First I was putting down a thin layer and then some sari silk and then a thick layer. Then I was going thick, sari, thin. Um, I experimented, I just found like one of the kids old paintbrushes and experimented with kind of uh, tapping it down because I think sometimes I was kind of overloading it um, and then having trouble drafting it. A few of them are really teeny. I can't find a teeny one. Oh, maybe this is a good example where I don't think there's really any or hardly any sorry silk in here because I put so much fiber on that when I was trying to kind of pull it up, it wasn't really combing and then it would like break off and I'd be like, eh. I could try to piece it back together, but it's just like, whatever, they're just for me. So I have a design in my head that I want to spin these up for. Um, and I think I'm going to do that second bump that I just showed you that currently has is just the blue fiber. Um, so I actually have two or sorry. So I actually have a hundred grams of the blue wool blended with sari silk, so it'll end up weighing whatever it weighs, and I'll weigh it when it's all done. Um, chunks of silk all over me. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. So once I start spinning it, I will show you, but otherwise, that is my adventures in using my mini hand card to make little Rolex.